Welcome. So in this uh, video here, we're going to go th through the solution to one of the additional questions from Unit 1112. Uh, and this question here is going to involve using the, uh, the quotient rule in combination with the first derivative test. Here's our situation. An object moves along a straight line. Its velocity is given by this function, v at t equals 4t squared over 4 plus uh, t cubed. We want to find the maximum and minimum velocities over the interval uh, t goes from 1 to 4. So if we want to find the maximum or the minimum, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take the derivative and we're going to want to set it equal to 0. So we want to find the derivative of our velocity function. And clearly, to find the derivative of this, we're going to need to use the quotient rule. So remember, we define our numerator as u, our denominator as v, and then our derivative is going to be u prime v minus u v primed all over v squared. So let's just work out what that is. Um, u primed is going to be 8t, v is 4 plus t cubed, and then we're going to subtract uh, 4t squared and multiply it by 3t squared, which is the derivative of v. And all of this is going to be divided by 4 plus t cubed all squared. Now we want to simplify this expression that we have a little bit. So let's do some expansion here. We'll have 32t plus 8t to the power of 4 and then minus uh, 12t to the power of 4 and this is all still divided by 4 plus t cubed all squared. And we're not going to worry about uh, simplifying that denominator because we know eventually we're going to set this equal to zero and only the numerator is going to interest us. So further, simplifying our numerator here, uh, we end up with 32t. Uh, we can subtract our like terms. 8t to the power of 4 minus 4 minus 12t to the power of 4 gives us negative 4t to the power of 4 all over uh, 4 plus t cubed, all squared. And then we can factor this expression a little bit here, uh, factor the numerator. So we'll take out a common factor of 4t to get 8 minus t cubed, again, all over 4 plus t cubed, all squared. So, as I said, we want to find maximum or minimum, so we're looking for the critical numbers, so we want to set this derivative equal to zero. So we will have um, zero equals 4t, 8 minus t cubed, all divided by 4 plus t cubed, all squared. Um, but of course, the solutions to this occur where the numerator equals 0. So let's just set the numerator equal to 0, 4t, 8 minus t cubed. And of course, because we already have this factored, we're going to have two solutions. We're going to have t equals 0 from this one. And from this term right here, we're going to have t equals 2. And it's got to be positive 2 because that's an odd root there on the t. So um, so it preserves the sign information. Now, there's a bit of an issue here because if we look at our two solutions, t equals 0 and t equals 2, if we go back up to our original question, we see that our domain here is actually limited to t values between 1 and 4. So this function, v at t, only applies between, uh, for t values from 1 to 4. So this t equals 0 isn't really a critical number because it's not in our domain. Okay. So we only have this critical number here that we have to consider as a possible maximum or minimum. So how are we going to look at this as a maximum or minimum? Well, we're going to check the sign of our derivative on, uh, on either side of this. So we can set up our little table here. We want to, let's see, our intervals are going to go from 1 to 2, because 1 was the start of our domain, and then from 2 to 4, because 4 was the end of our domain. 
and we want to check the sign of each term in our derivative here. So we have three terms in our derivative. We have 4t, we have 8 minus t cubed, and we have 4 plus t cubed squared. The term that was down in the denominator. And we want to look at the sign of each of these things and find out what is the sign of our derivative in each of these little sections. So let's take a look here. Let's on this a little bit. Okay, so in the interval from 1 to 2, let's see, 4t is going to be positive. It's also going to be positive over here. Um, our third term down here, 4 plus t cubed all squared, is of course going to be positive and positive. So let's see, the last term we have to work on here is 8 minus t cubed. And if we put in a test value like 1.5 or something just a bit bigger than 1, this is going to be positive here. And if we put in a test value of 3, 3 cubed is going to be 27, so it's going to be negative over here. So our derivative, v prime to t, changes sign from positive to negative at this point t equals 2. So if our derivative goes from, if our derivative is positive, our slope is positive. If our derivative is negative, the slope of the tangent is negative. So clearly what we have is a local maximum at t equals 2. So we can just say t equals 2 is a local max. And we can figure out what the velocity is at 2 by summing this back into our original equation. And what we get is a velocity of 4 thirds. Now, because we have a restricted domain, we should also check our endpoints as well. So what are our endpoints of our domain? Well, they are t equals 1 and t equals 4. So we sub 1 and 4 into our velocity function, and we find 4 over 5 at v equals 1, and 16 over 17 at v equals 4. So where is our maximum and where is our minimum? <coughs> well, let's see. Our maximum is going to be right here. This is our largest numbers, 4 thirds. What is our lowest velocity, including the endpoints? Well, that's going to be 4 fifths, which is less than 16 over 17. So we can say, therefore, we have a maximum velocity of 4 thirds meters per second. And a minimum velocity of four fifths meters per second. And of course, if you'd done those as decimals, that would have been fine as well. And let's just double check that this actually answers the question we were asked. We were asked to find the maximum and the minimum velocities. So yeah, the, these answers we've given down here in this therefore statement are, are the velocities, they're the maximum, and the minimum.